This is one of the largest, most difficult airlifts in history. And the only country in the world capable of projecting this much power on the far side of the world with this degree of precision is the United States of America. The past week has been heartbreaking. We've seen gut-wrenching images of panicked people acting out of sheer desperation. You know, it's completely understandable. They're frightened, they're sad, uncertain what happens next. I don't think anyone, I don't think any one of us can see these pictures and not feel that pain on a human level. Now we have a mission, a mission to complete in Afghanistan. It's an incredibly difficult and dangerous operation for our military. We have almost 6,000 of America's finest fighting men and women in, at the Kabul airport. And we're putting their lives on the line, and they're doing it in a dangerous place to save other Americans, our Afghan allies, and citizens of our, our, our allies who went in with us. But let me be clear. Any American who wants to come home, we will get you home. But make no mistake, this evacuation mission is dangerous. It involves risks to our armed forces, and it's being conducted under difficult circumstances. I cannot promise what the final outcome will be, or what it will be that it will be without risk of loss. But as Commander-in-Chief, I can assure you that I will mobilize every resource necessary. And as an American, I offer my gratitude to the brave men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who are carrying out this mission. They're incredible. And now we have almost 6,000 troops on the ground, including the 82nd Airborne, providing runway security, the Army 10th Mountain Division standing guard around the airport, and the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit assisting the civilian departure. As we continue to work the logistics of evacuation, we're in constant contact with the Taliban, working to ensure civilians have safe passage to the airport. We are particularly focused on our engagements on making sure every American who wants to leave can get to the airport. Since I spoke to you on Monday, we've made significant progress. We've secured the airport, enabling flights to resume. Not just military flights, but civilian charters and other, from other countries, and the NGOs taking out uh, civilians and vulnerable Afghan uh, vulnerable Afghanis. We've already evacuated more than 18,000 people since July and approximately 13,000 since our military lift began on August the 14th. And we're working on a variety uh, to verify that number of the Americans are still in country as we work on this because we're not don't have the exact number of people who are uh, Americans are there and those who may have come home to the United States. We're not, we want to get a strong number as to exactly how many people are there, how many American citizens, and where they are. Let's put this thing in perspective here. What interest do we have in Afghanistan at this point with Al-Qaeda gone? We went to Afghanistan for the express purpose of getting rid of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, as well as, as well as getting Osama bin Laden. And we did. We went and did the mission. You've known my position for a long, long time. It's time to end this war. The estimates of the cost of this war over the last 20 years range from a minimum of $1 trillion to a think tank at one of the universities saying $2 trillion. That's somewhere between $150 million a day and $300 million a day. There'll be plenty of time to criticize and second guess when this operation is over. But now, now, I'm focused on getting this job done.